Hello, my name's Leanne McGlynn, and I'm here with McGlynn Institute Neonatal. Welcome to our Neonatal Procedural Skills Series, where we discuss laryngeal mask airways, or LMAs. The eighth edition of NRP recommends the use of a supraglottic airway in neonatal resuscitation when an advanced airway is needed. In other words, it can be the A in Mr. Sopa. This advanced airway can be easily placed by any trained healthcare provider with a high incidence of success and a low rate of complications. Can be helpful in those patients with difficult airways, such as Pierre Robin or subglottic stenosis, or if the provider is uncomfortable or unsuccessful with neonatal endotracheal intubation. In fact, studies have also revealed that it can reduce the incidence of needing intubation if used immediately upon determining the need for positive pressure. In other words, bypass the use of a face mask and go directly to a supraglottic airway. A supraglottic airway can also be a mechanism for instilling epinephrine or even surfactant. Keep in mind that catheters pass much easier in LMA such as this one where there is no webbing down at the glottic opening. Yet on the other hand, there are LMAs that have a webbing at the end and may make it difficult for the catheter to pass through which surfactant or epinephrine would be instilled. Please note that there are a number of different LMA sizes, shapes, and curvatures. So keep that in mind when you are choosing the LMA for your neonatal patient. The typical LMA size for a neonate is a size one and can be used on patients two to five kilos and may work on those at least 1500 grams. Size markings can be found on the package, the top of the tube, and on the pilot balloon as well. LMAs have a universal 15 millimeter adapter that can be connected to devices just like an ET tube. LMAs also have a glottic or anatomically shaped cuff that is inflated by adding air to the pilot balloon. Once you have chosen your LMA, you want to prep the patient and the equipment. You prep the patient by placing their head at the end of the bed as if you were endotracheally intubating. The LMA is prepped by attaching a syringe to the pilot balloon and adding approximately four NLs to the cuff and assuring its functionality. Just prior to placement, you will remove all the air from the cuff, deflating it completely. Now the operator will stand at the head of the bed. They will secure the patient's tongue. Then they will slowly advance the LMA with the cuff's opening pointed toward the patient's body as seen here. You will advance the LMA until it seats in the glottis and the lip in the gum line is between the two markers on the tubing of the LMA. At this point, you will add air back to the cuff. The LMA should seat well in the mouth and you can now begin ventilating. Keep in mind, just as you would when administering any positive pressure ventilation, you will want to look for chest rise and improvement or stabilization in vital signs. Although typically few and minor, there can be some complications from LMA insertion. These include soft tissue trauma, vomiting or regurgitation, strider, or the most important would be airway obstruction from improper placement. So now it's your turn. Let us know how this video helped you in your actual clinical practice. Looking for an NRP, procedural skills, or simulation-based training course? McGlynn Institute Neonatal has you covered. Give us a call or text at 704-728-4961 or email Dr. McGlynn at drmcglynn at mcglynninstitute.com. Look forward to hearing from you soon.